The human body has about 40 trillion cells. Every second, hundreds of thousands cells die and are replaced by new ones. In order for the body to stay in control of this continuous renewal process, cell death and cell division must be tightly regulated at all times. For example, in the gut, if the cells die faster than new ones replace them, it can cause the intestinal wall to be leaky. On the other hand, division that is too fast is not healthy and can be indicative of cancer due to erroneous reproduction. The cell cycle is the schedule responsible for renewal and maintenance of the healthy cell count. It consists of several phases, separated by checkpoints at which the cell passes through various security and quality checks to ensure that the division will only proceed if everything is under control and working as planned. If something is wrong, a cell can commit suicide by triggering the so-called programmed cell death. Cells that are not prompted by external or internal factors to divide reside in the G0 or metabolically active state. This is the usual phase during which cells exhibit their function. Muscular cells flex, neuronal cells transduce signals, secretion cells from various glands produce hormones, and so on. Many differentiated cells remain in this phase once they have reached it. Other cells, like certain skin cells, are able to continue to divide. Once the cell receives a signal that it must divide, and it is also competent to do so, it exits the G0 phase and enters the mitosis cycle by moving to the G1 stage. At the first checkpoint, the cell checks itself for appropriate size, sufficient nutrients, growth factors, and a very stringent check for DNA damage. Since division is a very energetically costly process, the cell cannot start without being sure that it has sufficient energy to finish it. In the S phase, the cell copies each chromosome it contains to ensure that each daughter cell receives a full set of genes to allow its survival. During G2, the cell continues to grow and produce necessary proteins. When ready, at the end of G2, another checkpoint establishes whether the cell is big enough and if the DNA replication has been completed. If all criteria are met, the cell can proceed to divide in the M phase. During the M phase, there is one last check to where the cell makes sure that the mitotic spindles are assembled correctly and that the chromosomes are well attached to its equator of the cell. This will ensure the correct separation of the chromosomes to the daughter cells. If that last check is passed, the cell divides into two cells whose fate might be to continue dividing further or specialize as specific cell type with unique function in organs. In all these phases, the cell executes diverse range of functions. In order to do that, each phase requires a different set of proteins. But how is it possible for a cell to completely change the protein expression pattern just by a simple stimuli like an extracellular growth factor? This is where the MAPK pathway comes into play. The MAPK pathway is one way the cells manage to communicate an extracellular signal down into the nucleus to the DNA. EGF stimulates cell growth and differentiation by binding to EGFR, a transmembrane protein that belongs to the family of receptor tyrosine kinases. When EGF binds to EGFR, it locks the receptor into a specific conformation, allowing a second receptor, tyrosine kinase, to bind effectively. In this animation, a HER2 molecule binds EGFR. In contrast to EGFR, HER2 does not need an extracellular ligand like EGF to be able to dimerize. This allows transphosphorylation to take place on the intracellular domains of EGFR and HER2, thereby activating them. Only when active, the intracellular domains of EGFR can recruit the downstream signaling molecules of the MAPK cascade, GRB2 and SOS. GRB2 is effectively the mediator protein for the signal from the receptor to the soluble intracellular proteins. SOS serves as a docking site for RAS. Upon binding of RAS, it is able to exchange the GDP in the cofactor binding pocket with GTP, thereby activating RAS. RAS then dissociates from the activation complex while staying attached to the cell membrane. In this manner, one GRB2 SOS complex can activate multiple membrane-bound RAS proteins, thereby leading to a signal amplification.
The signal cascade continues with RAF. In the inactive state, two 1433 proteins are bound to RAF, one of them blocking the interaction surface with RAS. To activate RAF, it first needs to get rid of the N-terminally bound 1433 protein. Separated by 1433, it is possible for RAF to change its shape and bind to RAS. Multiple activated RAS proteins, combined with RAF, form a structure called a nanocluster, which can then recruit downstream signalling proteins. The sole removal of the inhibitor protein 1433 is not enough to activate RAF. Another protein called SRC is needed to phosphorylate RAF to fully activate it. A scaffolding protein binds RAF and SRC and forms a complex. The scaffold increases the local concentration of SRC and RAF, allowing them to interact and ultimately facilitating the activation of RAF by phosphorylation. Activated RAF is able to activate the downstream signaling molecules MEC and ERK. Once again, scaffold proteins are required to do that efficiently. Activated ERK translocates to the nucleus. In the nucleus, ERK activates MIC, a transcription factor involved in the regulation of 15% of all genes. Normally, MIC is degraded rather quickly in the nucleus by proteasomes. But by activating MIC, the half-life is increased and it can accumulate in the nucleus. MIC can then form a dimer with MAX. This dimer can subsequently bind specific motifs on the DNA. Aside from the DNA, MIC can bind histone acetyltransferases. Acetylating the histones makes them negatively charged. Since DNA itself is negatively charged, this causes dissociation of the histones and allows the transcription machinery to access the DNA and start the expression of genes located there. Another way of influencing the gene expression is by cross-linking two DNA strand by MicMax and MadMax dimers. With these complex interactions, the docking of a simple extracellular growth factor can cause a shift of the protein expression pattern of an entire cell.